Hey guys, my name's Chad Prickett, uh, proud board member with the United Goalkeeping Alliance. Um, I'm a goalkeeper coach for Ohio Premier Soccer Club. Uh, I've been doing that. I've been the director of goalkeeping there for close to 15 years now. Um, then I coach alongside with uh, Coach Weiss here, who I'll introduce in just a moment. Um, so just quickly today, we're going to go through uh, my experience in helping goalkeepers go uh, on and play in college. Um, but before doing that, I want to introduce uh, Coach Weiss. Matt, you want to wave to everybody? Look at that. Um, so Matt is the associate head coach at Ohio Wesleyan University. So I picked Matt specifically because I consider him to be a goalkeeper friendly coach. Um, I know some of us have had coaches that are not most goalkeeper friendly. Um, so let me just read off and I want you guys to listen on this. There's some good stuff about Matt, uh, a quick little bio on him. So recruiting co coordinator and head of the defensive unit. So in 2022 tied for NCAC conference record and fewest goals allowed, uh, let him one, um, ranked 15th in D3. So that's out of 408 schools and goals against average at 0.593, then they were ranked 11th nationally and fewest goals allowed. So that was 22, uh, 21, same thing, 10th nationally in D3 and goals against allowed, 11th and fewest goals allowed in the season and fifth in shutouts. Let me go just one more. In 19, they finished second in goals against allowed in the country, fourth and fewest goals allowed, then fourth in shutouts. Um, so he's a perfect person in being an associate head coach, but then very, very good defensively. So I wanted to have him on tonight. The last piece I'd say about Matt, um, his ECNL team was ranked number one in the country uh, most of last year, which is the 06 boys. Um, and he has one of his goalkeepers is committed to Louisville and the other one in, to UNC Greensboro. I am gonna share my screen. We're gonna get into this. So Matt, thanks for uh, joining us tonight, man. Yep, thank you. All right, so guys, um, I'm sharing based on my experience. So what I'm gonna tell you guys is everything I say here is not gonna be perfectly right for your situation. I want you uh, just listen. If you got questions, we'll, we'll help uh, however we can. All right, so. Success is finding the right fit. Um, when we go through this, guys, the most important thing is finding the right fit. So those four years of college, can you be at the best spot for you? Whether that's academically, soccer, we want that all, um, all to be joined there to be perfect. Now, questions, do me a favor, put the questions in the chat, guys. Uh, we're going to hit on a lot of stuff today, so more than likely I'll, I'll hit on it here at some point. Then at the end, we're going to follow up and make sure all questions are answered. All right, so a couple statistics I want to hit on real quick. Um, and I'm not going to read through all these, but I just want you guys to understand some of the statistics here. Division one, you're looking at 338 schools, 205 men's programs, and 338 women's programs. Um, D2, you're looking at smaller numbers. The one common thing you're going to see here is there's going to be less men's programs than women's programs in every situation here. Um, but anyways, there's D1, D2, D3. Scholarship-wise, uh, Division One and Division Two and NAIA, they have the ability to give athletic scholarship. Division Three is academic and merit-based only, and we'll hit, in, hit on that in a little bit. But again, take a look at the numbers. Um, only 205 in Division One for men versus 338 for girls or women. So this is a big one um, that I think surprises some people. So what's your likelihood or your kid's likelihood of playing in college? Uh, for male athletes, so this is any division, you're looking at 7.4%. Um, whereas division one, it's 0.8%. Um, whereas the female, the odds are a little bit better. So any division, 9.7%, and division one, you're at 2.1%. So 
So 2.1%, you're looking one out of every 48 kids. So I want that to sink in. It's not easy. Um, we have a lot of kids, they're, they're set on the division one pathway. That's all I care about. Um, when you look at the numbers, I think you can understand a little bit more what you're up against. So male goalkeepers are, excuse me. Yeah. Male goalkeepers or male soccer players. So why are those numbers so much lower? Three big things that, that we've noticed there's almost 40% fewer men's division one teams. Um, then there's 16%, there, there's more boys than girls playing. So there's a bigger pool. Uh, then the last piece, guys, the international, the men's side significantly higher. If you look the other day, um, was it West Virginia played Marshall? And if you look at those two rosters, I'd say it's maybe 75% international between those two rosters. Whereas the women's side of the game, it's a lot less international although that's growing pretty significantly Matt, do you see much do you see much international in the d3 game yeah i think um i think since especially since the uh like the covid season like the 2020 season um there's just been a, a you know an increase in the amount of guys who want to come play from overseas so i think even with our own roster at hot wesleyan um we've seen an increase and then across the country yes for sure what what how many internationals do you think is on the roster right now? We have uh three, and I think our most was probably around 2021 where we had five or six. Perfect. So that's the thing for me. I'm seeing that now, even at D3s, where I don't think that happened too much except for some specific schools. All right, so scholarship money. Um guys, if you notice, I've got massive asterisks on the scholarship money, because the one thing I've seen is it varies from school to school. Um, some schools are not fully funded. So for example, if there's a division one school on the men's side that, you know, they could have upwards of 9.9 .9 scholarships. If they don't have the funding in place, maybe they only have two or three. Um, some schools allow you to stack academic and athletic. So your division one, your division two, your NAIA, they might allow you to do that. Some do not. Um, your Ivy Leagues is a good example. There's no athletic scholarship at all. Um, so what we've seen is it's it's all across the board. Um, now, for the division three specifically, Matt, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions or if you want to fill in. But for D3, one of the things that I've seen is um, there's merit-based, academic-based. And then I've seen like this little gray area where it's like, hey, I'm looking at this school too. And sometimes schools are, are giving, off, giving money uh, for stuff like that. Do you have any thoughts specifically to D3? Yeah, I mean, even Wesleyan, which is not a, a cheap school, um, you know, it's really competitive in Ohio with Division three schools. So, um, you know, we do our best to help uh, the student out. Uh, lower that price as much as possible because to be frank about it, you know, schools are going to want to try to get the most um, money from you as possible. And it's, it's our job to help them find ways to obviously lower that amount. Um, but they're like, for example, um, with us, like if you're, if we're looking at a kid who's looking at also, you know, another school in Ohio, that's division. Um, if we get there, um, they're kind of, a package from the student athlete and share that with our admissions. Um, there's been examples where they'll um, work kind of extra to make that competitive to try to close that gap. Because if the, if the difference is a couple thousand dollars and that results in us getting or not getting a kid, um, they're going to put in extra effort to help you with that. And, and most of the time um, families are kind of hesitant or nervous to put that effort in and just to ask worst case, they can't do it. Um, but for some of our student athletes, the ones who put in extra effort and really try all their avenues, um, they've been able to get money off, um, which maybe they didn't expect to, but that extra research goes a long way for sure. And that's, that's, we just saw this with the kid going division one, uh, to a neighboring state. They were able to give him in-state tuition, which saves $16,000. Um, so what I'd love to tell you with scholarship money that, you know, it's black and white. It's so far from it. Um, but generally speaking, 
most of your division ones are allowed will allow you to stack academic and athletic on top of each other. Um, and you'll see that in division two as well. Uh, whereas division three is typically academic and need base and those little gray area uh, areas to get money. Now, with that said, and we're going to hit on this in a minute, guys, academics is massive. It's the easiest way to get money. Again, if you guys have questions, do me a favor, put it in the chat. I'm going to try to go over this stuff pretty quickly so we can, at the end, get into uh, questions and kind of have a conversation. Um, just FYI, for this picture. So we've got two of these girls, Division One, one Division Three, and one Division Two, and one not playing. And you can see it looks like they're having some fun. So grades and character. Um, Guys, deal breaker, deal maker. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the details. I can share a bunch of stories. Um, character is a must. I think character, if, if a kid's a good kid, they do the things that they're supposed to do. That's typically going to reflect on their ability and who they are in the field as well. Uh, so it's massive. Academically, um, I think it's major it's a major plus when the coaches don't have to worry about you as a student. Um, if you're a kid that's three, five or above, they're like, I don't have to worry about Johnny. If you're a kid that's a two, eight, um, they're going to probably pass you for the kid. That's a three, five. And what I will tell you is, you know, someone like me, if I'm helping a kid during the recruiting process, the coaches are going to talk to me. Um, and grades and character are hundred percent going to get brought up. You got anything on that, Matt? Yeah. I mean, you know, this is my 10th year at Ohio Wesleyan and, um, that's just so true what Chad said. And <clears throat> because I coach club also, um, you know, when other college coaches ask me about my players, um, I'm very honest because there's instances where I'm also recruiting a kid, the same kid, but, um, when it comes down to it, after these conversations, it ultimately comes down to, um, am I going to have to babysit this kid for four years or is he going to help us, um, help us help our team and be a good representative of, of the school and the team and the program. So, uh, I also can't stress that enough because when it comes down to it, I'll be working with this kid for four years on and off the field. Um, and the kids who already have it figured out and who work hard and who are mature and listen, um, they're miles ahead of, you know, whoever's in second place there. Perfect. All right. So I want to hit on the timeline a little bit and like what that looks like. So right now I'm going to speak specifically for eighth grade to 10th grade. Um, and if you guys are, if you're in that time area, your kids in that time, time frame, it's, it's just time to start really educating yourself. Um, so for me, I'm really big when it comes to choosing a school, which isn't easy. Start with building your non-negotiables. Um, so it could be distance, location. So, you know, do I want to be in a city or a college town? Cost, obviously. Um, academics, uh, majors, uh, majors, if I can talk, huh? Majors offered. There we go. Uh, size of the school. Um, then like for me, like I went, I played at Kentucky, like it was important. I wanted a school that I can cheer on in sports for the rest of my life. So having a football and basketball program was big. Um, another piece is academic support that that's what sold my parents on Kentucky. Um, so those are some ideas of non-negotiables. So based on the non-negotiables, start to build a list of schools. Um, and for me, all the kids, I don't care how good they are or how bad they are or what have you. I tell them division one, division two, II, division three, and maybe even an I, an I, an AIA, sorry. Um, a little trick I found, if you find a school that you like, um, look at who they play against and who's in their conference. Um, a lot of times you might be able to find two or three other schools uh, that would be good fits for you off of that. Um, and then in that ninth, maybe 10th grade, uh, 10th grade, maybe ninth grade, start to accumulate some highlights from clip, uh, clips from games. Um, possibly attend a couple, I can't talk. 
possibly attend a couple of college games. So for like those folks that are on here for Columbus, go to Ohio Wesleyan game, go to an Ohio State game, check out, see what that level's like, um, see what the atmosphere is like. Is that something you want to be a part of? Is that a level you think you might be able to get to? Um, then the likelihood of a uh, college coach recruiting, talking to, or going to one of your games and these grades is probably pretty close to zero. Um, and at this time, your primary focus should be continuing to develop. You got anything on that, Matt? Yeah, I think um, like going out to observe games is really important. Um, this past spring, um, you know, we're division three and we played Ashton University as division two for our spring game. Um, and I invited my club team out and we kind of spent a day just on a college tour and watching the game. And they, it was a really good eye opening experience for them that um, even if their main goal was division one, just to see what the level was like from two other divisions in one game and just being on a, on a college campus in a, in a game like environment was really beneficial for them to kind of uh, broaden their horizon a little bit and have them be a little bit more open to um, exploring other options as opposed to just like my number one dream school. Love it. And again, guys, I can't, I can't stress it enough. Right. At these grades, start to educate yourself, but development, that's priority. All right. So now we're getting into when things are starting to get pretty serious. So the June 15th after your sophomore year, going through your senior year. So the June 15th date going into your junior year is the time where your division one and division two coaches can start to actually talk with you. Um, what I'll tell you, if you're not a super, super highly touted kid, you might not get reached out to then. And that's OK. Um, division three and NAI schools, my understanding is they can talk to you kind of whenever. Matt, is that right? Yep. Thumbs up. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Thank you. Um, at this point, guys, that junior year, I want to have a good highlight video in place. And we're going to walk you through that. Um, and then hopefully we can start to narrow down schools you're interested in. And the goal is uh, reaching out to those schools. And we'll get into that. And, and can I get that list down to about 20? And one thing kids have trouble with is like, hey, if I'm not hearing back from a coach or they don't sound interested is – deleting the name off that list for me that's a positive so we can focus on like the ones that are really interested in us um at this time parents make sure you listen to this this is a great time to attend school specific camps like if a school's expressed interest in you it's not one of the uh one of the emails that they send out to a million people so if i get one of those i'm going to try to reach out and talk to the coach if it seems like there's actually interest it's a great time um, to go to a school specific camp. Now with the women, I see commitments often happen late in the junior year to early senior year. That's typically the window I see. Uh, with men, I think commitments often happen a little later than the women. Um, typically late junior year to March of your senior year. Um, what I will tell you guys, since I made this, it's all getting pushed back a little bit further because of the transfer portal. All right. So how to be seen or identified. All right. Uh, you need to recruit schools, guys. Uh, these soccer programs do not have like Alabama or Ohio state football budgets where they're flying all over um, or to take helicopters to your high school games. All right. So we need to recruit them. Um, so what we're going to hit on, uh, how to email a coach, send, send your highlight video, um, showcases, college ID, college ID camps, phone calls with coaches, and them attending your games or your practices. So emailing a coach. So I stole some of this from Matt. All right. So Matt, I, uh, from a subject standpoint, let me know if this is perfect in your opinion or not. So Really easy, your first and last name, comma, position, comma, grad year. And if you have something that's attractive, so maybe, hey, you're 6'3", okay, that, that, that'll bring some interest. Or 
you've got a great GPA or ACT score, put that in there too. Uh, you like that, Matt? Yeah, I mean, we get so many emails <clears throat> from recruits. And again, just kind of speaking bluntly, if you, like, if you can get that information in the subject, um, with all, those are all the things that I would be looking for right off the bat to get my attention, which is the main point. So the best thing you can do is, you know, those, those things that Chad listed on there are the most important things from an initial standpoint. Um, and he'll kind of obviously comment on the rest of the email, but that's the smartest thing you can do. And, and again, if you were um, an all state keeper or, you know, ECNL champion, whatever, you can kind of throw a little, little something on top. Um, that's going to stand out. And after a showcase, when I come back home on Sunday and there's, you know, 50 emails on there, I'm looking for the ones that have that information from the start and that's going to help you out and get noticed. Okay. So content in the email, personalize the first paragraph. What do you like about the school or the program? Why might you be a good fit? Um, ask, their, ask if they're looking for a goalkeeper in your class. If they're not looking for a goalkeeper in your class, perfect, we'll cross them off. Um, paragraph two, your schedule. What events are you playing in? Simple, get the field number, time, jersey color, number, whatever, all the basic information, get it to them. Then the third part, introduce your highlight video. Um, so for me, uh, at the beginning of, if I haven't talked to and I don't have a relationship, guys, I'm emailing the head coach and I'm CCing the rest of the staff. Um, because you don't know, does the head coach deal with the recruiting? Uh, like Xavier's old head coach, it seemed like he was heavily involved. Some head coaches, they don't, that's other people. So at, at first, I'd email everybody. Once you've got a relationship with someone, then, yeah, just, just respond to them. Um, to Matt's point, coaches get hundreds of emails. It's important that they have access to all your information in a clear and concise manner. Um, a little sub-note down at the bottom it might be smart to do is create an email account specifically for your college recruiting stuff. So if my name is Mike Anderson, Mike Anderson, 2023 GK at gmail.com. Anything Matt, you think like in that initial email to a school, you'd like to see uh, that piques your interest or things that you don't like? Yeah, I think it's, it's bound in, you know, ticking all the boxes without telling me, you know, I started playing soccer at four at four and going into your life bio. Um, as you can imagine, like, you know, some email where it's like, Hey coach Weiss, you know, I'm interested in Oklahoma university um, or they'll get the email wrong or they'll get, you know, all their stuff on their um, showcase schedule, but they didn't tell me what, what, froze up on us. I'm going to move on. All right. So the highlight video. So guys, the highlight video, the goal of the highlight video is to garner interest. All right. Um, that's, that's the goal is that simple. People aren't going to watch your highlight video and say, Hey, I'm going to offer you a scholarship. The highlight video there, the goal is they watch it. They're interested in you. So they call you or they email you or they invite you to a camp. So for me, the platform to put it on that I like the most is YouTube. Um, I hate Huddle because I've got to watch ads. Uh, that drives me nuts. Uh, another thing is like a lot of people have Veo now. So from a recording standpoint, Veo is awesome. Um, but there's no issue. Like if you, re if you record with your camera or your phone, that's fine as long as we can see uh, what's going on. Matt, you back with us? Yeah, sorry, I got I, I don't know what happened. I got I got nervous there, but um, no, yeah. In short, just making sure that what you're sending is is personalized to that coach, even if you send the same kind of email to five different coaches. Um, and then I always enjoy that they did a little research prior to the email. Like for example, we don't have engineering at Ohio Wesleyan, so if a kid emails me and says, "Hey, you know, I'm interested in engineering," blah blah blah, I can tell that it's just a blast email, and they didn't do any research and I won't get a response from you. Perfect. All right. So, uh, breakdown of like how I recommend making a video for goalkeeping. Um, looking for three minutes, give or take in length. 
uh, I like to start with a picture of you. For me, like, I just, I don't, I don't know why. I know what the kid looks like now. Okay, that's Matt Weiss, you know, or this is whoever, right? So picture right here, then off of that name, grad year, contact information. Uh, you know, you put your, your coaches contact, goalkeeper coaches contact. Uh, then a couple of details, height, weight, GPA, some important, you know, some little details where when I see that, that's what you look like. Here's what club you play for. You know, I know just a little snippet about you. Okay. And that's about three seconds long. Now, the next 15 to 30 seconds, guys, you got to bring the fire. And I'm looking for your best stuff, your biggest saves, your biggest collection on crosses, awesome distribution. All right. I want to see your best stuff. I want to see what you look like at your best. Can you grab my attention? Can you hook me where I'm like, ooh, I want to see some more of this kid? All right. Um, now, after that, and, and one thing I'll point out, guys, uh, what you think your best stuff might be might be something I might look at something a little bit different. OK, so, yeah, like if it's a great save or a great distribution, I look at all that. The other thing I'm looking at decision making. Uh, positioning, athleticism, explosiveness, courage, ability to make big save. All right. So just some details in there. Um, but then after that, I would recommend breaking into three sections. All right. So you just brought the heat, all your best clips. Can I get a section of crosses? Can I get a section of distribution? Then can I get a section that's a combination of breakaway and shot stopping? Uh, at the end, finish with a picture of you. Leave that up longer, maybe five seconds with that information where if I'm like, man, that kid was good. And let me write this down real quick. I need to follow up with them. Um, another little detail there, it's okay to have multiple videos. So, you know, if, if parents, if you're that parent or if I say, Hey, you're, you're pretty involved. Um, that's fine. Make a video of the kids sophomore year, make a video of the kids, uh, junior year, same thing, senior year. And when I say make a video, make them make the video, but you can record the stuff. Um, Matt, any thoughts on videos? I know you send a lot to me now, but. Yeah, I think um, just because there's different technology resources for everyone. Um, let's say you, your club, or your high school doesn't record games and maybe your parents aren't able to record on their phone or if they do, it's not the best. Um, I like uh, having just a, a video of the kid working out with their club goalkeeper director or goalkeeper coach at a minimum where I can just see them working on handles and saves, even if it's just literally just, you know, one goalkeeper is holding the phone up and then he's just showing kind of technique stuff, anything that can, you know, anything's better than nothing. So if you're not able to kind of knock out these things with, um, you know, multiple clips and different angles and whatnot, um, something's better than nothing except especially for a goalkeeper. So um, just do the best you can, but obviously the goal is for what Chad has here on the slide. All right. So showcases. So simple showcases. It's either an opportunity to make a great first impression uh, to a coach or a school, or it's an opportunity for like a school you've been talking to, to validate their thoughts and opinions on you. Um, so what I'd say, do your research ahead of time. Look what schools are attending the events. Uh, email your schedule to schools you're interested in early. So guys, by early, like ideally, you're probably two to three weeks before the event. Um, these coaches, what they do is they go through all the people that have reached out to them, and then they try to get a grand plan of how do I pop around and see everybody. And a lot of times they can only watch for a half. Um, what I'll tell you, too, that might be nice, send up a follow-up email or follow-up phone call maybe three, four days ahead of time. Coach Wise, pumped to see you out there at whatever Las Vegas this weekend. Um, really hope you can make it to our game. And maybe that might be just a little reminder. Matt, you got anything on that? Yeah, I mean, you, you guys honestly have to assume that it's that the college coaches are the laziest people ever and how, how simple you can make their jobs. So as Chad nailed, you know, sending things out ahead of time where when we're making our kind of schedule for the weekend, I already have, you know, Chad's information about his, his schedule and, and, and uh, his game times. 
And then I think the follow-up email is really good too, because again, when I come home from these weekends, I have so many emails that I honestly might forget to follow up with that kid. Um, but if Chad emails me, emails me and says, Hey coach Weiss, um, thanks for coming out interested in what you thought of me. Um, that reminds me, Oh yes, Chad emailed me and I have to, um, you know, follow up with him and see how things went. So assume that this coach is lazy, assume that he forgets things and try to make his life as simple as possible, which I hate to say, but that's to you guys benefit. Um, and it'll help you guys stand out for sure. Then the piece with showcases or even like if a coach is at your game, guys, some details there at the end, your warm up is massive. I see too many warm ups, and this even happens to goalkeepers in our club that are too nonchalant. So when I see that, I mean, I personally get pissed off. Um, so a lot of coaches might might brush you off right there. No, he's not serious enough. He doesn't take enough pride in his work. Uh, another way that I think you can stick out is your communication. Um, without nerding you guys out on a bunch of different statistics, a simple one to think about is they say a goalkeeper is in danger of being scored on 3% of the game. All right, so what are we doing the other 97% of it, right? So there's a big chunk playing with feet. But communication and organization is something if Matt came up to my field back when I played, he would know what was going on and kind of who was running that half. Uh, body language is another thing that's massive. Uh, does your body language look like you're engaged? Does it look like you're mentally picking daisies, right? Um, a lot of times that body language or the communication is going to be the first impression. Uh, and then the last piece, presence, which really for me, communication uh, plus body language is a big chunk of your presence. Uh, so it's kind of wrapping those two up and put it another exclamation on that. Do you have any thoughts on that piece, Matt? Like when you roll up to a game, uh, things that get your attention in a positive or a negative way? Yeah, so it's tricky with goalkeepers because it's hard to recruit goalkeepers at things like showcases because, you know, I could watch, let's, let's just make the assumption that a coach is going to watch at, at most a half of your game. Um, and you might not get any shots at all. Maybe your defense is really good or the other team's not great. Um, and Chad actually helped me kind of rethink how I recruited these showcases and, and going to see them warm up is, is really, really important. Um, and then you know, not, not to beat a dead horse, but everything Chad said where, you know, 3% of the game, you're kind of in your main action, but um, your body language and communication and presence is so, so important. And I think sometimes players forget about the importance of that, but just think about for that full 45 minutes, just assume that coach is watching you. And even if, even if the, your team has the ball on the other side, you know, are you organizing your back four? Are you encouraging your teammates? Are you staying engaged? Um, those things seem so small, but it can literally make or break, um, you know, our, our interest in a player. So it's really, really important. How about how about a negative, like something that sticks out as like, ah, I'm not interested in that kid anymore. It could be a field player or a goalkeeper. Yeah, I mean, again, I coach, you know, my club team, it's high school boys. So, um, you know, a, a difficult demographic to, to work with. But um, there has been plenty of times where, you know, that negativity or, you know, bad, poor body language. Um, someone just mentioned social media, Eric did, which is spot on too. Um, and even honestly, like as we're walking from game to game and we, you know, teams are warming up and we hear what these guys are saying. Um, there's been so many times when I'll see a kid um, talking to his teammates, you know, waiting for his game to start and he'll say something where I'll, I'll go, you know, I want nothing to do with that kid. So literally from the second you walk out of your car, um, assume there's a spotlight on you and, and you got to be at your best behavior the whole time because I'm telling you guys, sometimes it's the littlest, most random things that will make me cross a kid off or definitely circle his name. And sometimes it has nothing to do with him actually playing in the game. Yeah, character. All right. So this is one uh, a lot of parents always are asking questions about. So like camps. So I'll just call it camps. I'm going to be a little bit more specific and hit on school specific camps from a recruiting standpoint. That's genuinely uh, generally what I recommend. So what I'll tell you guys, be smart about attending these. Um, you know, camps are important. Uh, they fund 
programs. And when I say fun, like it could be used to help pay an assistant coach or a GA or, or what have you. Right. Um, but at the same time, like they do, the goal of the camps is to identify kids, but just be, just be educated, I guess, on that piece. So some positives with me on camps, it gives you a great opportunity to get in front of the coach. Um, they get to see who you are as both a person and a player. Um, they get, you get to know the coaching staff, how they coach and their personality. Um, you know, my coach was very much a screamer, a yeller. I like that. I like somebody who's on me. Um, I know a lot of people that don't like that and they want more of a, you know, the talking and, and what have you. But anyways, it, it gives you that opportunity to see their personality and their style. Right? Um, from a campus standpoint, you know, you get to see the dorms, the facilities, the food, uh, the local city and town, <clears throat> but also what the travel's like to and from your house. Is it a three hour drive or are we looking at seven um, or do I need to fly? <clears throat> and a goofy one for me, like uh, I put this down here because this related to me. It's a great way to meet uh, potential future teammates. With me going to Kentucky's camp, I met three guys that end up being on my team. So it was kind of nice having that relationship and bond going into it. Uh, the last piece that I really like about attending a school specific camp is at that end of it, you should be able to ask yourself, Hey, can I see myself going here? And you should have a pretty good idea of what that answer is. You got any, you got two cents on that? Yeah, I think, um, you know, when we run camps, whether it's, you know, uh, youth camp or ID camp or team camps, um, I think, you know, the players are always kind of nervous to start to establish a relationship with the coaching staff. Um, so as as nervous as you might be, even, you know, from the first session, introducing yourself to the coaches, little conversations throughout the weekend um, really helps us get an understanding of what you're like as a person, which is what we're going to be dealing with more than coaching you for two hours a day, a couple months out of the year. Um, and then just really buying into trying to absorb as much from those camps as you can, because again, um, you guys will see this as your kids go through this process, there's going to be a certain trip or a moment when, you know, your son or daughter is going to say, you know, I can really see myself going to this school. And that comes from kind of being open to diving into that weekend, not just from the soccer side, but just taking advantage of getting to look around and get a feel for the dorms and the food and the facilities um, as well as, you know, being comfortable. They say they want to, you know, I want to move far from my home, but then when they're driving seven hours to somewhere, they might actually miss home and realize that they want to be closer to mom and dad. So, but that all comes from the experience of taking the, uh, 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 taking the risks of going out to these camps and, and trying to put yourself in a situation where you can really see how you're going to react to, uh, you know, a new environment. And when, when it comes to like going to a school specific camp guys, like I think, I think right around three to four is a pretty good number. Um, yeah, it could be a little bit more, it could be a little bit less. Um, but just to give you an idea from a number standpoint, uh, the asterisk down in the bottom. So for me, I break them up in camps in three, three different areas. There's school specific camps, um, you know, going to Ohio Westland cause I've got interest in them. There's development camps. So like United goalkeeping Alliance, their, their residential camp, it's all about development. What I run in Columbus, it's all about development. Um, the last piece I put in there, and I kind of have to like watch myself a little bit, there's money grab camps. Um, so for me, you know, I'm, gosh, how old am I? 38 years old. And somehow I get emails and in being invited to go and play at camps. All right. That's an example of like, okay, somebody's got some email distribution list and they just blast this out and they don't care who you are. Um, now, what I'll tell you, I've had multiple kids recruited from uh, attending some of those. So they're not all bad, um, but just be thoughtful uh, in, in those type of environments. All right, so I'm going to pick this up a little bit, guys. So phone calls. This is one thing I can't tell you how many phone calls I've gotten about phone calls. So you're going to have a phone call with a coach 
the girls, they always get nervous. All right. So I just want to give you a quick little couple little details and, and a mindset to have here. All right. So if a coach sets up a phone call with you, they're probably interested in you. Uh, what I tell a lot of our goalkeepers, typically you're going to be like in the top three uh, goalkeepers they're looking at. Uh, the goal of the phone call is to better understand if the school and the coaches are a good fit for you. Um, have questions prepared. So just a couple little ones here. How would you describe, describe your team's culture? Uh, what specifics do you want in a goalkeeper? I think that's a massive one. Uh, do they have a goalkeeper coach, which you should know if you looked into school? But think about things you actually care about because it makes it a lot easier for you to have a conversation. Um, when are you looking to make an offer for this position? Now, Matt will tell us here in a second. I'm really kind of point blank. Um, I don't mind asking that question in, in a first phone call, but that might be a second or third phone call. Um, where do you have me ranked? Again, pretty aggressive, but I don't mind asking. Um, but a conversation with a coach can be nerve wracking for many guys. But remember, you're interviewing them as much as they're interviewing you, right? Because we, when we're talking to them, I want to make sure this school, this coach, they're, they're a good fit for me. Matt, you got any thoughts like on questions? Like uh, questions you like or like that maybe you're like, eh, or even any good stories about phone calls? <laughs> I mean, uh, again, no offense to high school males. I used to be one, but one of the first things that we look at in our initial phone call, especially is, can this kid string a few sentences together and being able to be conversational and, and, you know, I see it from both sides because again, I also, not only am I recruiting from the college side, but I'm also helping my club guys find colleges as well. And I always tell them to, I don't think a test is the right word, but uh, basically make sure, put some pressure on these college coaches and make sure that they're actually doing their research on you um, so for example, um, like, Hey coach, you know, I know you saw me play, you know, in Florida last, last month, whatever, what did you like about my game or what are some things you think I should work on, which tests that they've actually been watching you thoroughly, um, asking questions like having, I don't know what the number is, like at least five to eight questions prepared. You might not use them all, but literally, even if you have them on a note card in front of you, just to, in case you get nervous and forget um, the more I hear a recruit ask questions to me, I know that they're serious about me and that they've actually done their homework and are, um, mature enough to go through this process. And again, I get it guys, like it takes experience and repetitions and you might bomb it on your first phone call, but you need that in order to get better at the next phone call. Um, so I have no problem similar to chat. I, I want my club guys who are being recruited to ask some not on the spot or serious questions, but really make the coach answer your questions and not just give you some fluff where maybe they're trying to just convince you to come to a camp like Chad talked about. So um, I don't really have any good stories, but I do think it comes down to like, can I have a 10 to 15 minute phone conversation with this kid? And maybe half the conversation isn't even about soccer. Maybe, you know, you, you got to establish a relationship with these coaches um, with soccer and without soccer as well. So just being, yourself and being prepared really goes a long way in that phone call. <clears throat> so attending practices, um, this is something we had, gosh, uh, actually see the girl from Iowa. That was the first time we had a college coach, uh, Rade, who's at Chicago now with their women's team. Um, he came out when they played Ohio state to one of our practices to watch Macy play. Um, so for me, just, just a general rule if a school's within six hours, you know, tell a coach, hey, you're more than welcome to come out to practice. Um, we've seen that more and we're encouraging that more because it makes your practice, I think, more enjoyable. Um, you know, locally here, we're in Columbus, we've had Ohio State out. We've got, I mean, we've had a bunch of different schools now. So I'd offer that up because sometimes if the tournaments or events doesn't line up, uh, if the school's closed, it might be might be a, uh, a great tool there. You ever do that, Matt? Yeah, I mean, honestly, it came from, you know, I would go to Florida or North Carolina and watch um, clubs that are in Ohio or Michigan 
And I would much rather save a weekend and pick one night during the week to drive up and watch uh, that, that kid practice than, than go to that showcase. So I think that's a, a really uh, good option. And also I think if, if the coach puts that commitment in, it's another clear indicator that they have sincere interest in you. And this is another opportunity to have a conversation, get to know them. Um, and as Chad noted, it, it'll see you in a training environment, which is what, you know, I want to see a kid train almost more than I want to see him play because you're going to see a lot about how they train. Um, and that means a lot with when you have them for four more years, you know, this kid's going to get better versus maybe he just shows up for games and whatever. So I think attending to practice is um, something you should definitely offer a coach. And I think it goes a long way if you see them make that uh, make that trip for you. All right. So just wrap it up, guys. Uh, a few final important details. Finding the right fit. That's the most important thing. Uh, mindset during the process. So when I say that, remember, we have to recruit the schools. Um, parents' role, support and help guide them. Don't do it for them. Um, I've had only one goalkeeper that has quit after their freshman year. Um, and his mom pretty much did everything. Uh, so that's one for me that's, you know, I've, I've kind of seen it continue to develop. It's massive. Uh, one of the things that most of you guys will notice when you go and play in college, it's a step up. It's bigger, faster, stronger. The pace of play is just more. Um, so make sure you're continuing to develop so you're as prepared as possible. And I can't like, I, I want to scream this one. Once you commit, it's time to increase your effort. Uh, we'll see kids like, and don't get me wrong, go ahead and take a week or two weeks off to be happy, uh, this, that, the other, but then it, you got to pick it up. It, it's not uh, do what you were before. You got to pick it up because you're going to a higher level. Then that's it, guys. Questions. I'm going to quit sharing my screen. So if you got some questions, let's knock this out. Actually, hit the wrong button. Any questions? Let's go to chat. I got one for you, Matt. D2 schools, are they allowed to combine academic and athletic scholarship money? I, th I think so. I don't have a, to be honest, I don't have a whole lot of experience with D2. They're kind of the wild west for me. So I'm not totally sure. Um, but I do know if you, I think NCA has like a recruiting page on their website, which explains kind of the differences. And I think it should explain that. So I don't want you guys to quote me on that, but um, I think they do, but I would, I would double check. I'm, I'm on the same page as you. Cause I'm trying to think the goalkeepers I've got at division two schools right now. I think they're on both athletic and academic. Well, guys, if we don't have any questions, I'll give it like another 30 seconds. Um, you know, I appreciate you guys getting on. I hope this was helpful. But I'll tell you, if if there's anything you feel like we didn't address, uh, I'd love for you guys to send me a message. Or if you're thinking, hey, can you go in more depth into other things? Um please, please just send me a message because uh, I want this to be as good as possible. Um, then Matt, big thank you. Uh, I know you're busy this time of year, so thank you for hopping on with us for about an hour. Um, again, Matt, Matt's one of the good guys. For those of you guys that missed it, you should go listen to the beginning of the recording. His goalkeepers give up – I shouldn't say his goalkeepers. His defense gives up, like, no goals. Um so he's been he's been great to work with. Let me see any more questions real quick. You have samples of videos that we could see. Uh, Michelle and PA, I'm gonna text you my phone number. If you text me, I'm gonna send you one. I'm at six one four seven three eight ten eighty five. Michelle, grab that number and just text me, and I'll send you one. Um, all right, that's it, guys. Thank you so much. Appreciate you.